I've just bought this old uh, logging arch for a hundred dollars. It's been sitting around unused for like a decade or so. It's got this sliding hook on top on rollers and back it into your log, bring the log up to about there, wrap a chain around and as you drive forward this roller rides up on this on this bar here and that lifts the log up. It stops getting dirt and crap in the bark so it gives you a much cleaner cut. It's fairly heavily made, like it's all pretty uh, it's, it's rusty but it's all pretty solid still. It's a good size as well, like you get a, a decent one metre log in there. The wheels are actually a little bit skewed out. It's just the way he welded the stubs on there. Instead of uh, grinding this face flat, there was a little tab in there or something and he just, instead of grinding it off to make them uh, straight up and down, he just welded it straight on there but it's not going to be sort of travelling at high speed so it won't really matter too much. That bearing needs a bit of work, may need replacing or just tightening up. But it'll, yeah, I'll take those off and have a look. Um, yeah, that tire's flat as well. So first of all I'll sort these wheels out, tighten up or replace the bearings, and then I might as well just give it a bit of a spruce up, get rid of all that rust and um, give it a paint job, and yeah, pull a few trees out. I've got some um, big pines that are sitting on the edge of the driveway. As they're getting bigger they're leaning over and taking the whole edge of the driveway with them so I'll cut those down and drag them out to the sawmill and uh, mill them up. Well the bearings seem okay on both sides. This side here is a little bit loose so we'll try and tighten that up yeah see that's fairly loose that nut we'll just take that off and throw a bit more grease in there You're not looking too bad in there. Those bearings are fine. No point taking that seal out. I'll just squeeze some grease in from the inside. Beautiful, that'll do it. Nice and smooth and no more play in there. Everything else looks good. Those welds are fairly solid. I think we'll leave this side alone because that's smooth and there's no play so that'll be okay. Those valves are clogged up with rubbish so we'll take those out and give it a clean and then see if they hold any air. Thanks for that. Yeah. Good job. Alright. That wasn't holding any air at all. And that valve looks like it's lost the rubber seal off it, so give that a bit of a clean out and see if we can get a better valve in there. PSI. I think that'll do me for now. Not a big fan of these split rims. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't think that one's holding much air either. Oh yeah, that does have air in it. That's good to see. It's got a whole lot of crap in the valve, so I'll take that one out as well and clean it. Some sort of glue in there. Alright, those tyres are both holding here, so they'll be okay. Glad I didn't have to take those off because I don't really like working with split rims. I'll just give those a bit of a clean up and um, yeah, paint those and they'll be good. These rollers are not moving, so I'll just take those off and give them a bit of grease and try and get them rolling again. They're quite old and it looks like the sun's got to them a bit, but they'll, they should be okay for a wee while. Alright, looks like that just needs a bit of a buff up and some grease, and it'll be good to go. Alright, that's much better. So I'll just leave that off until I've painted all this. Um, makes it easier to get in there. Right, I've ground all the rust off with a, a flapper disc and a, an abrasive disc on the deeper parts. There was a bit of pitting in places, but I've pretty much got to the bottom of it now. So I've given it all a good wipe down with acetone uh, to get any dust off there. And uh, yeah, it's ready for a primer now. That paint has dried nicely, 
Uh, I put like three coats of uh, top coat on there so that should keep the rust away. That's basically ready to put back together and uh, drag out some logs. I'm going to use the old uh, Fiat 5566 uh, four-wheel drive. It's got the best grip out of all my tractors and being four-wheel drive it's got a bit more pulling power. Uh, but first of all I'm just turning the dishes around inside the rims just to bring the wheels out slightly and you can see I've done that side there and it's a lot quite a bit wider than this side so yeah that should make it a bit more stable. So I'll just get this uh, wheel off, turn the dish around and we'll pull out a few logs. So you can see by turning that dish around, I've gained probably another six inches width on both sides. So it's gonna have a lot wider stance now. Right, I'll knock down that old uh, pine tree. It's starting to lean over quite a bit and it's going to fall over eventually the heavier it gets and take the edge of this road with it. So um, yeah, I'll knock that down there. I pruned this tree about 22 years ago, so uh, it's nice clear wood. It's got a bit of a curve in it, so I'll, I'll cut it into like three meter lengths for the sawmill. Yeah, that should be a good one.
Oh well, that was a piece of cake, dragging that big log out of there. Um, makes all the difference having that front end off the ground rather than just trying to drag it. There's going to be a lot less dirt in the bark. Uh, this one is curved, so there will be some, but it's going to be a lot less than there would have been. And it's it's good that it keeps it in the same position as well. Like pulling up from one point, it stops the log rolling around, which is quite quite good. What would that be? Seven meters? One, two, six, seven, eight. That's about eight meters long. 72 centimeters diameter at the big end so quite a bit of weight in there so I'll mill all that up now and um, just cut it into three sections should get quite a bit of timber out of that so that's the uh, hundred dollar log arch bloody good thing actually thanks for watching guys we'll catch you next time